If you are enjoying the Autumn Week collection, you'll be excited to know that the sweater comes in child sizes as well, many child sizes. Today I'm going to be making the size one, so the one-year-old sweater on camera. This is a flat constructed sweater, so it's very approachable and fun to make and only has two seams. We're working the entire thing in rows. So what you will need today, I will be using the Upcycle Alpaca Blend Worsted Weight Yarn in the color Time. Now, what I want you to know about this yarn is depending on the color that you're using, it could vary in the size of yarn. I know that sounds odd, but especially when you're working with an upcycle yarn, it's not as consistent between colors in terms of getting gauge. So no matter what yarn you use, I would check gauge often for this pattern only because this yarn can be a little bit fickly when it comes to sizing. Just being honest about it, I haven't had any problems. I've made several of these, but I just want to make you aware to continue to check your gauge because this is also the same yarn and we can tell like it's a little bit thicker than this color that I'm working with today. But as long as you're checking gauge, you should be fine. And if you are looking for a substitute, I actually think that the Heatherly Sport Weight is an amazing substitute for this. I've made the adult size in this Sport Weight and it's sized the same. But as long as you're checking gauge, you should be fine. Especially where this is made flat, that is really easy to do. You'll also want a yarn needle for weaving in those ends, some scissors, and a size H crochet hook. And I'm using the dots hook that is from We Crochet. You can get an entire set of dots hooks for an amazing price. So let's go ahead and let's get started in making the one year old size of the autumn wheat sweater. Now on camera today, I'm going to be making the one year old size in this sweater because I have a cute nephew who can wear that this winter and I'm so excited. And we're going to start by making the first cuff ribbing. This is what's called a cuff to cuff sweater and we're gonna be making this flat. So we'll start by making the very first cuff. I'm going to go ahead and make a slip knot and place that onto my hook. And then we will chain seven for this size. I like to tighten down that last chain as it's a turning chain and then working in those back humps. So that's kind of underneath there. Those back humps are what I love to work into for this very first row. I'm going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in the remaining chains across. This will give me a total of six stitches. So six single crochet stitches uh, for this cuff ribbing. Now after working all six stitches there, I'm going to turn my work and this next row is going to be a repeat row. So the cuff is always quite simple. I'm going to chain one and tighten that down. That chain one does not count as a stitch here or throughout the pattern. It's just a turning chain. And next I'm going to be working into the back loop only of my next stitch. So if we look at the very top of our fabric, we see that we have like a V, a v going on here. And we're not gonna work into the front of that, the first front loop, only the back. So we're not working in the front, but only the back of that loop. And then we'll single crochet in the back loop only, so not in the front, but just in the back, for each stitch across for six total stitches. And that is row two. Now row three through 24 for this size, so I'm gonna be doing a total of 24 rows here, is the same thing. We're just chaining one, tightening it down, and then single crocheting in the back loop only for six stitches. And that's all we'll be doing for all these rows until we get to 24 rows for the cuff, and then come on back. So no, your eyes do not deceive you. This is a different color of yarn. I really wanted to make my nephew a sweater in that dark green because I think he'd be super cute in it. But you know what? He'll be super cute in anything. And the more I kept staring at my screen as I was crocheting, I was thinking that is way too dark for on camera. So this color will be easier for us to see as we make this sweater together. So I've switched to the pistachio um, instead of the time. 
So now I have 24 rows of this cuff ribbing and we are going to rotate our work. So we were working in rows here. We're going to rotate our work and we're going to be slip stitching across one edge of this ribbing so that we can set this up for rows for as we continue on. And we will be slip stitching one slip stitch per row. So I'm simply going to chain one and that's not going to count as a stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch one stitch per row all the way across here, which means I will have a total of 24 slip stitches across the long side of this cuff. So now that we've slip stitched 24 stitches across, we're going to turn our work and we're going to be working this next row in half double crochet stitches, but we're going to work them in the front loops only. So not the back loops, the front loops only of the slip stitches. So I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to work a half double crochet into the front loop only of each slip stitch across. And what that does, the reason why I enjoy doing it this way is when we are done with this and the front of our work, we'll have a nice crisp line kind of running across there, which just finishes it off quite nicely. So uh, half double crochet in the front loop only for all 24 stitches across. Now for row two, we are going to be taking in quite a bit of information here, but stick with me. Row two is going to be an increasing row, and it's also the row that we are going to learn how to work in the third loop for this pattern, which gives us that nice knit look. So I'm going to start by doing my increase. So I'm going to chain one, and then we are going to half double crochet two into the very first stitch. Now for these edge stitches, if you don't want to work them in the third loop, you don't have to. It's completely up to you when you're increasing, but I'm going to work mine in the third loop so that you can see how it's done. When we look at the top of a stitch where we normally, this is where we normally put our hook through, that's working a in a regular way. But what we want to do is we want to yarn over and place our hook through the loop, the third loop, which is on the front. It runs across the front here because we've turned and this is facing us. Now the third loop is facing us and is on the front of our work. So we have those top stitches and then these third loop stitches. Those are the ones that we want to be working in. So I'm going to half double crochet two into that very first stitch for an increase. And then I will half double crochet in the third loop until I get to the very last stitch in this row. And everything from here on out for these half double crochet stitches will be worked into that third loop unless indicated otherwise. And now I've worked to the very last stitch in the row. And for the very last stitch, we are also going to work two half double crochet stitches into that last stitch. So that was an increasing row. We have increased by two stitches on an increasing row and we now have 26 um, stitches versus 24 on the previous row. So that's how an increase row is worked. As far as a non-increasing row is worked, we would turn our work and we would simply chain one and half double crochet in the third loop for every single stitch across. But this is where after doing row two, we're going to talk about the repeats. So for the one year old size, we are going to repeat now the increasing row on every fourth row three times. So that will bring us to a total of 32 stitches. 
So every single time I get to my fourth row, so on my fourth row after the last increase, we'll increase again, and we'll do that three times. And then we will continue to just work non-increasing rows until we get to a total of 20 rows for the sleeve. I'm going to work that up and show you what that looks like because we're going to be increasing and our sleeve will taper, it will get wider towards the top as we work this because it is a tapered sleeve. So I just want to recap here. We did our first row, then our second row is increasing, and then I did one, two, three, and this is my fourth row since the last increase. So on this fourth row, I am going to do another increase row where I will start my very first uh, stitch by doing two half double crochet stitches, and then I will half double crochet in that third loop all the way to the very last stitch, and in the very last stitch, I will do two half double crochet stitches again. So you can see how that repeat is going to work, and we've already got the cutest little sleeve started. And now I've got this cute little sleeve here. So I have a total of 20 rows, and then we have 32 stitches across the top of the sleeve. And it's time for us to move on to that next body section. So we've got this first sleeve done. It's oh so adorable. And now we're going to turn our work and we're going to add some chains on each side of the sleeve so that we make space for the body. And we'll work across all those stitches, which is working across, you know, up the back, over the shoulders and down the front. Since we're making this flat, this is where we're really going to add some stitches here. Now in my instructions, what I have you do just to make this a little bit simpler is you can grab a second ball of yarn or you can even just take the other end of your yarn because we're not gonna be using this for very long. I'm gonna remove my hook over here and I'm gonna to come to the opposite side of my working yarn and I'm simply gonna insert my hook into that last stitch on this side. And then I'm going to attach this ball of yarn leaving a little bit of a tail here. And then I'm going to chain 32 stitches. Now after chaining 32, I can go ahead and fasten off. I told you we were not gonna use this strand for very long. It's just setting us up when we get back over here. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten off and very gently, because I don't wanna pull down that last chain, very gently here, pull out my yarn, because we wanna keep all those chain stitches nice. Now I'm going to put that strand away and we're going to go back to our working yarn here on the right hand side. And we're going to chain over here as well. But on this side, instead of chaining 32, we are going to chain 33 because we need a turning chain for this side. Now that we have chained 33 on this side, I will tighten down that last one because it's my turning chain. And then working in these back humps, we are going to single crochet seven. These single crochet stitches will be our ribbing for the either on the back or the front. We'll be doing them on each end here because this is the ribbing that will run on the bottom of the sweater. If you don't want ribbing on the bottom, you can just simply work these as half double crochet stitches. Now after single crocheting seven, I'm going to work the half double crochet stitch in these remaining chains until I get to these sleeve stitches. Now after chaining on this side, we are going to start by working a single crochet stitch in the second chain from the hook. So we have our turning chain on this side, so we're gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook, and then we're going to single crochet into the next seven stitches. So we will have a total of eight single crochet edges, eight single crochet stitches to start this row. And now we are going to half double crochet into the remaining chains until we get to these sleeve stitches. So we'll simply half double crochet, and I love doing all of these in that back loop only. I think it makes for a clean edge, especially when it comes to seaming. 
it makes this edge down here, our starting edge, look really, really nice. And that will help us out when it comes time to seam this. So I'm going to half double crochet in the back in the uh, humps or what they're called of the chain stitches until I get to the to the sleeve stitches. And now that we are at the sleeve stitches, we are going to be doing half double crochets in the third loop across all 32 sleeve stitches. And then we will come back and I'll show you how to work the rest of the row across the remaining chains. Now for these remaining chains on this side, we are going to do regular half double crochet stitches. And I do still like to work into those um, back humps. We're going to do half double crochet stitches until we get to the last eight chains. So half double crochet until the last eight chains. Now that we are to the last eight chain stitches in this row, we are going to single crochet into those eight chains. Now this will bring the row count for this row to a total of 96 stitches from all the way across. Now I'm going to turn my work. And for this next row, we'll start with a chain one that does not count as a stitch. And we will single crochet in the back loop only for the first eight stitches in this row. And then we are going to half double crochet into the third loop all the way across until we get to the last eight stitches of this row. And we will single crochet the last eight in the back loop only. So work uh, row two, we're not doing any increasing or decreasing here, which is working all those stitches, single crocheting the single crochets in the back loop only. All the half double crochets will be half double crochet in the third loop and then come on back. Now we're going to turn our work. And for this size, after doing these first two rows of this body section, we're going to go right into those gorgeous puff stitches that look more complicated than they are. So we're going to start this row by working the very first uh, eight stitches in the back loop only, single crocheting them. So these are ribbing stitches. And now we're going to start to work our repeats for the puff stitches. We are going to skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next. And now we're going to work back into that skip stitch by working a puff stitch. So we'll yarn over, insert into the skip stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull up. And then we'll do that one more time. Yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull up. We now have seven loops on our hook. And what I like to do to finish off my puff stitches is I yarn over through the very first six loops on the hook and bring up the loop and then yarn over to the last two on the hook to complete that stitch. And that's one puff stitch. Now we're going to be repeating this across. We're going to skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next. And then we will be working a puff stitch into that skipped stitch. And we will repeat this all the way across until we get to the last eight stitches in this row. So once again, we're going to skip a stitch and single crochet into the next, go back to that skip stitch and work a puff stitch. And then repeat that across until the last eight stitches. Now that we are to the last eight stitches of the row, we will simply work those as single crochets in the back loop only for those last eight. Now we're going to repeat this puff row one more time. So we're going to turn our work and do the exact same thing. So we'll chain one and work the first eight stitches, single crocheting into the back loop only. And then we're going to be working these puff stitches again. So we're going to skip the next and single crochet into the next stitch. And then going back to that skip stitch, we will work a puff stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way across until we get to those last eight stitches where we will single crochet in the back loop only for those last eight stitches. So we're just repeating the previous row. But as we do this, it somewhat staggers these puff stitches by working it in rows. So we're going to skip a stitch, single crochet into the next and puff a stitch into the skip stitch. 
And you can start to see that this is working out quite beautifully. It has that nice wheat look. It almost looks, looks like a stalk of wheat, um, which is why this collection is named what it is. But it's really fun to work these puff stitches. It adds a nice detail. Um, and you only have to work them for a couple rows at a time. So I'm gonna work the rest of this row and then I'll come on back. Now, after completing those puff rows, we're going to go back to doing some repeats. So we're going to be repeating row two and we'll do it for four more rows. So we're gonna do four rows after these puff stitches. But just to note, the very first row after doing the puff stitches, we are not able to work our half double crochet stitches into that third loop because it's just too difficult to do so uh, when we've got those puff stitches going on. And we've also got some single crochet stitches on that row as well. So what we will do is we will single crochet into the first eight stitches, and then we're going to just simply half double crochet into each across until we get to the last eight stitches and then single crochet in the back loop only for the last eight stitches. And then when you work three more rows after this, you'll be able to go back to working those half double crochet stitches into the third loop. I also wanna know if you feel like this might be getting too tight, loosen up your tension on the single crochet stitches. We don't want this to, to pull in too much because we want it to fit around our waist nicely. And if you really think that you can't get these to be loose enough for a good fit, you can omit these and just do the half double crochet in the third loop for all these single crochet stitches as well if you're not liking the way that the ribbing looks on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and complete those four rows and then come on back. Now that we have this shape going on, it is time for us for this size to make some space for the neck here. So to do that, we will only now be working on the back section of this. So we will start by chaining one, and then we are going to back loop, single crochet, eight, stitches and now we are going to half double crochet and we're going to be working our half double crochets in that third loop for the next 32 stitches After working 32 stitches, we are going to turn our work. We're not going to work any more in this row. We're going to turn our work. So right now we have a total of 42 stitches, including the cuff for this back portion. And we're going to chain one and half double crochet for 32 stitches and then single crochet in the last eight. So for the repeats for this one, we will be repeating those two rows working back and forth. And we're gonna do that until we have a total of 14 rows here. And that's gonna help create the width of this garment. So once again, we're just going to be repeating where we will start uh, our first row. We will chain one and single crochet eight stitches in the back loop only, and then half double crochet 32 stitches. Then we're going to turn and chain one and half double crochet 32 stitches and then single crochet the last eight in the back loop. And once again, those half double crochet stitches are worked in that third loop the entire time. And we will do that until we have a total of 14 rows here. Now, after working those 14 rows, we are done with this back section and you can fasten off if you like, uh, you can just fasten off and then use the yarn over here. Or if you happen to have a second ball around, you can always leave this because we will come back to this side after we finish this front portion. So I'm gonna grab a second ball of yarn here and we are going to be skipping, I've got it marked, we are going to skip 16 stitches and then join to the next. And we're going to be joining in the back loop of that half double crochet because we will continue working in that stitch pattern. And then we will simply half double crochet in the third loop all the way across until the last eight stitches where we will single crochet in the back loops only of the last eight stitches. So working on the front here, we're doing exactly what we did on this side. We're just mirroring it. 
So we'll be starting the rows with the, the half double crochets and ending them with the single crochets, turning, starting with the single crochets, and then ending with the half double crochets. Now the stitch counts on this side will be the same as they were for this side, which means there's a total of 40 stitches, and that is 32 stitches in half double crochet and eight stitches in single crochet. So once you work up 14 rows for this side, then you can come on back. So now we have 14 rows on this front side, but before we fasten off here, we wanna go ahead and make some chains so that we can work across them when we come back on our next row. So we're going to make the same amount of chains that we had skipped stitches over here. So I'm going to chain 16. Now after chaining 16, I can fasten this off and carefully pull that tail end through so we don't tighten down that last chain because we'll be using this in just a second. Now next we're going to turn our work and if you had fastened off your yarn previously, you can go ahead and reattach it to the side over here. And now we're going to go back to working the entire length of this just as we did on this side. So we'll be doing a second set of these puff stitches. The chains we just did, we will work across them right here as we come across this row. We're just gonna pretend they don't have to be attached. We're just gonna work right into that first chain there. So now for this row, we're going to be working the same amount of stitches that we did down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and single crochet, chain one and single crochet in the first eight. And now we will half double crochet this section in the third loop until we get to these chain stitches. And next we're going to take this chain and we're going to be working into it by just doing half double crochet stitches because we can't do it in the third loop yet. But for this row, we'll just simply half double crochet into each chain across. So this will be a total of 16 half double crochets. And I also want to note that you'll see, I also want to note that right here, you'll see that this strand uh, will be helpful later because of the way that we chained it. There's a little bit of a gap on this row, but you can take that strand here and then just simply weave it in and then that will help join that row so that there's not a gap between those stitches. So I'm gonna keep working across these 16 and then for the remaining of this row, I'll half double crochet in the third loop and then the last eight stitches will be single crochet in the back loop only. Now for the remaining of this section, we're simply mirroring what we did over here so for the next three rows, I'm gonna work them where we do the single crochet stitches, the half double crochet stitches, then the single crochet stitches, the same as we did in this section here. So we'll work it in th for three more rows. So I have a total of four rows from this neckline. Then we're gonna do two rows of puff stitches. Then we're gonna go back to doing our established repeat here where we do the first stitches in single crochet, then we'll half double crochet, and then we'll do the single crochet. And remember, whenever we work the row right after the puff stitches, it will be in regular half double crochets, and then the next row will be uh, in the third loop. So we're just repeating what we did here. We're just kind of mirroring it in terms of the order that they go in, but it's all the same style of crochet work. So work at that long section and then come on back. Now that we have all eight rows done on this side of the garment, we can go ahead and fasten this off because now we're gonna go back to working that second sleeve. So I'm gonna fasten off this side and then we are going to work on our next row. So as you can see, I've turned my work, I fastened off, and now I'm going to skip the very first 32 stitches in this row. And then I'm going to join to the next stitch, which we're working those half double crochets in the third loop. And I'm going to be half double crocheting 
32 stitches. So that's the width of the sleeve that we ended on on this other side. We got to 32 stitches here. So now we're just working backwards on this side. We're starting with the top of the sleeve and we are going to half double crochet 32 stitches in that back loop only. There are 32 stitches across here for the sleeve. And now for the size one year, we are going to turn and work six non-decreasing rows. So we're not ready to decrease yet. We need to just work some non-decreasing rows for this size. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll do six rows of non-decreasing where I'm simply just half double crocheting in that third loop for each row all the way across, not changing my stitch count at all. Now that we have worked five non-decreasing rows, it's time for us to do a decreasing row. So I've chained one and how we're going to do this is we're going to half double crochet the first two stitches in the row together. Now you can work these in the third loops if you're comfortable doing so, or you can do them in irregular. So I've decreased the first two stitches and now I'm gonna work until the last two stitches in this row and then decrease again. Now that we are at the last two stitches of the row, we will half double crochet two together as well. And now we've decreased by two stitches. So for this size, we now have um, 30 stitches instead of 30. So that's a decreased row. It will decrease on each side. So for this size, now we are going to work the decreases on every fourth row three times. And then we will continue to work until we have a total of 20 sleeve rows and we will end with 24 stitches. So we're really just mirroring what we did over here, but instead of increasing, we are decreasing towards the cuff. So work those decreases and then we'll come on back and do the cuff. So now the sleeve is reduced down to 24 stitches and I have a total of 20 rows. And a lot of times I like to use a stitch marker to mark the rows that I've decreased. That way I can tell when I've worked enough rows again to decrease on the fourth row as I'm working those decreases. It's just a little uh, helpful when you mark the decreases so you don't have to keep going back to the beginning and counting how many rows you've done and when you should be decreasing. So at this point we are going to be working on the cuff and when we did the cuff on the other side this is where we started and we worked it in rows and we will be working this one in rows as well. The difference is going to be that we are doing a join as you go style ribbing because this we started all on its own. So what we will do here is we're going to start by chaining seven. And now we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each across, which means we will have a total of six stitches per row. Now that we have single crocheted down those chains and we have six single crochet stitches, we are going to go into the next two stitches. So we count this first uh, row we just did as the first stitch. And now we are going to go into the front loops only of the next two stitches, slip stitching those. So now we're working the front loop on the edge of the sleeve instead of the back loop. And the reason why is because once we have this done, it'll create a nice line here so it matches with the other sleeve. So now I'm going to turn my work and skip those two slip stitches that we just did. And working in the back loops only, we will single crochet for six. So I'm going to skip two, back loop, single crochet six. And now we're going to turn our work chain one, single crochet in the back loop only for those six stitches. Working in the front loops of the stitches along the edge of the sleeve, we will slip stitch two, turn our work, skip the two slip stitches and single crochet in the back loop only for six. And you're going to repeat those last two rows until you have worked all the stitches across the um, edge of this sleeve. So we'll be working all the stitches all the way and it will build this ribbing across here. And after working this last row here, I would slip stitch into that first stitch there, that last stitch of the row, 
and then we have our gorgeous ribbing. We can go ahead and fasten off our yarn. And now is the time to weave in any ends and block this. So blocking is always a good idea. It makes seaming a little bit easier. Everything will match up quite nicely. It's almost like doing a quick iron so things lay a bit flatter, they curl a little bit less, and it makes seaming a little bit easier when we seam this sweater. So go ahead and block it flat. It's really easy. Before you can see where we're headed here, we're gonna fold it down and seam it. But before we do so, doing a little bit of flat blocking is a really good idea. Now we are going to be working the ribbing around this uh, neck area. And you'll want the right side facing you. I can always tell by my cuffs, which is the right side facing me, which has this nice line on the cuff versus the back sides. It's okay, but it's not quite as clean and pretty. So with the right side of your sweater facing you, we're going to go ahead and join the yarn on one side. So one side of the neck here along the edge, and then we can join our yarn. And for the one-year-old size, we are going to chain six. And we're gonna tighten down that last chain, rotate our work, and starting in the second chain from the hook, because that was our turning chain, we are going to single crochet and single crochet in the remaining chains, so we will have a total of five single crochet stitches here. Next, we are going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. So this is join as you go ribbing, just as we did previously on the cuff. So we're gonna slip stitch two along the edge of the neck, and then we're going to turn our work. Skipping those two slip stitches, we are going to single crochet in the back loop only for five stitches across. And just a tip, if you want the edge to be really clean towards the neck, you can single crochet through both loops of the very last stitch or the very first stitch in each row. And that will kind of pull those together a little bit tighter along that edge if you want. So we're going to be repeating those two rows where we're going to be single crocheting in the back loop only until we get to the sweater edge. So now we're to the sweater neck edge and we're going to slip stitch two into the next two stitches. Turn our work, skip those uh, slip stitches and single crochet in the back loop only for five. Now we're gonna do this all the way around, but I wanna give you a couple of tips here when you're working ribbing around a neckline, especially one like this, because we can already tell that this is quite boxy. We've got these corners going on here. So when you get to these corners, instead of slip stitching two from this edge and slip stitching evenly along here, what you can do is you can kind of skip some space or kind of do a slip stitch two together and slip stitch two together to pull these in quite a bit to make it more round. And I can show you how to do that when I get there. And the other thing I wanna know is when you're working along this edge, you just want your slip stitches to not pull the fabric in nor stretch it out or make it all um, different, we want it to still maintain a nice drape. So we want to work our stitches as evenly as possible across that. And now that I'm at this corner, what I'm going to do is instead of slip stitching in the next two stitches, I'm essentially going to be slip stitching two together. Now you can do this in a couple ways. You can either yarn over and pull up one, insert into the next space, yarn over and then pull through all of them. Another way to do it is you can insert your hook into one stitch, rotate it around and insert into the next stitch, and then yarn over and pull through everything on the hook. That one's a little bit more tricky when you are working with these slip stitches. I kind of have to finagle it through there. But basically it's slip stitching two together. So now I have one slip stitch on the edge, even though I went through two stitches. And I'm gonna do the same again over here. I'm going to insert my hook into this spot, and this time I'll show you, you can pull up a loop, insert to the next spot, and then pull that through all the loops on the hook. And that's my second slip stitch. So I've only done two slip stitches, but it 
brings this corner in to be a bit more rounded. And that's what I like to do on the corners just to kind of make it a bit more clean. Then I'll turn my work and skip those two slip stitches and single crochet in the back loop only. And I'm going to repeat that all the way around this neckline until we get back to where we started. And I'll show you how to join your uh, first row with the last row we work. So now that the ribbing has been worked all the way around, we have our last edge and our first edge here. And what we will do is chain one and go through the back loop of the side closest to you and then the back loop of the side farthest away. Or if you didn't start in the back humps of that chain, just the loop on the very first row. And then we will slip stitch those together. Now, if you don't want to do it this way, you can definitely fasten off and use a yarn needle and thread to do this. But once you have worked all of those stitches together in this row, so there's five, then you can fasten off and weave in your end. And then, and then it's time to do some seaming, which that's the last thing we have to do on this. That's the nice thing about this is once we have gotten to this point, seaming is super simple and then your sweater is just done even though we've been making it flat this whole time. So there's that cute little neckline. Now the only thing left is the seaming and I want to talk quickly about two different ways to do so or you can just always use your favorite method but for this sweater we could either do a slip stitch so I use my crochet hook and I slip stitched up the side and then underneath the arm or you can grab your yarn needle and thread and you can seam it together with your yarn needle and thread like I did over here. Both of them are, are really good looking. They're not that noticeable. They're underneath our arm and on our side. So it's really whatever method you want to do. The key is to line up the sleeves so that the lines underneath are lining up together. And that way, you know, you're also, you've got it at the right um, tension because we want them to line up and not be off. Um, for this one, I'm going to show you the slip stitch seam, but I also want to know you could always do the slip stitch with the crochet hook to the um, on the side and then fasten off leaving a long tail and whip stitch seam the sleeves if you want. So you can always use a combination of both. Now to slip stitch this cute baby sweater together, um, we're going to work by going inserting our hook through the front loop of the clo side closest to us and the back loop of the side farthest away and then we're going to slip stitch those together. And we're going to be doing that all the way along these stitches here along the side. So front loop, back loop, slip stitch together. It creates a nice looking seam that um, hides everything and it just looks like a slip stitch seam. And it does also kind of match the stitches um, in this stitch pattern that we did. Now, if I just continue that along here, doing the front loop and the back loop, that will work out for this one too. You can also experiment depending on uh, how many rows you did or what um, size you have facing, because I want this side out. You may want the other reverse side out because it is reversible. Um, you can experiment where you can do uh, like into the third loop and both loops on the other side or something like that. It's always nice to kind of like play with your slip stitches, see what looks best. On the adult size sweater, I went through the third loop like I did on the hat and it looked great. The way this one lines up, I think this looks great. It's, it's kind of hiding that seam there and looking quite nice. So now that we are at the underarm portion, we're gonna be lining these up so that these lines come together uh, correctly as we work across them. We want them all to line up to be um, the same. Now, I'm going to be switching the method I'm using here a little bit because um, we're going to be slip stitching this, but I don't want to hold it like this and slip stitch. It'll make like a really rough seam. So what I'm going to be doing is bringing my yarn underneath the fabric and working over it. So for this first one, I'm going to slip stitch on one side here. I'm going to grab some stitches. And then I'm going to bring my hook over the working yarn, grab some stitches from the other side, and then slip stitch those together from underneath. So I'm gonna grab some stitches from, I like to go back and forth, so I'm gonna grab stitches from this side, go over to this side and grab some stitches, yarn over from underneath, and pull through everything that's on the hook. And then I'm just gonna keep on doing that, and I'm gonna line up um, whenever you can line up those um, 
lines of the stitches to make it look nice. This is where we have like our row here, lining those up, slip stitching from underneath. Now, if you don't like to use this method, that is fine. If the flat slip stitch is just, it is a little bit fickly. And if you're like, no, not for me, like I said, you can always fasten off here and then uh, whip stitch the sleeves together if you want. But notice how I kept these lined up here to make it look quite nice. And I'll finish working that down the sleeve. Now, once you get to the cuff, you can go back to uh, bringing your yarn towards the top of your work and working in the front loop of the side closest to you and the back loop of the side farthest away, or just working through the loops that you have there, joining those together for a really nice finish. Now we can fasten off and weave in our ends and then we'll simply repeat however we seamed on one side on the other side to make it consistent and look how cute that is a cute little baby sweater that was so simple and easy to make um, it comes in several different sizes i really hope that you enjoyed this project remember you can also make it an adult size and match and be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for some more fun projects mm -hmm.